It's something that most painters don't do anymore. I feel like I would just add a little bit of something extra special to my work. I spend a, a good amount of time really making sure that the frame and painting don't leave my studio until I feel like I got the marriage. All right, everyone, so they, basically what we're going to be giving away uh, today is an opportunity to be in person for the workshop of Carlo Russo and his, a bit, his way that he actually frames his frames. Uh, so it's a, it's a framing workshop for artists so that you don't necessarily have to be able to have to take it to uh, a framer, but you can actually do all of this in-house. Um, he's been doing this for quite a while. He has solo shows almost every year, and he does all of his own framing. So the guy's very experienced. We're really excited about having him here in East Oak Studio. And um, so what we'll be doing today is giving away one slot of the in-person workshop that he'll be doing uh, in October. So um, while all you need to do is like this live stream, comment frame in the comment section and share this uh, video and you will be entered to win the opportunity to come here to East Oak Studio and spend some time with us. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to talk about what we're going to be doing today. So I've found that um, when in my journey of really learning how to paint, that there are some real eye-opening moments of learning how to use the paint to, with the properties that it actually has, visual properties that it actually has, and using them to your advantage to actually create dimension. You know, when you're first starting out, you're just trying to like throw some paint on and figure out just color and how color works and all of these different things. But um, once you start really getting into it, you realize, oh, this actually can allow something to be pulled forward. And this part of the paint property actually allows for something to be pushed back. So today, we're actually going to be talking about how to use opaque and transparent colors and how to use thick and thin paint to create dimension in your piece. So there will be other properties that I'll be using in the paint advantage to, that we'll actually be, we'll be talking about more in another episode. But for this episode, um, I'm actually just gonna be talking about that particular element. So the first thing I've done, I've actually started mixing a few uh, notes here on my canvas so that I could talk about uh, what we're going to do. So going along with my last live stream when we were mixing skin tones, I'm actually going to be using some similar colors so that you can use these properties to your advantage. And I'm first going to make sort of like these little two-dimensional overlays and then I'm going to show you how you can use that as making a three-dimensional object like a sphere or something in your painting to make it feel um, more applicable to what you're actually going to be using in the real world. So first of all, what I try to do is I try to use two different brushes when I'm doing this. I'll use one brush for my thin paint and I'll be one, using one brush for my or opaque and thicker paint. And the reason I do that is, is that way I'm not dipping into my turpentine every two seconds and also when I'm dipping into my turpentine, then going into mixing the opaque paint, it then thins out the paint, and then it's, it, you sort of lose that property that you're looking for. So, at first, I'm going to do a yellow uh, version, and in this little two-dimensional piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a bit of that purple to my transparent oxide yellow. And this is uh, violet, cobalt violet, that I'm using right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to make like a little circle back here. Now, what I'm trying to show here is, is that the property of oil paint is thin uh, or it's uh, transparent is what I meant to say for the most part. And the, yes. And so there, that's a little bit better. Got to make sure y'all can see it. Um, 
that's the beauty of live, everyone, is uh, sometimes every, you, you get to see all the good and the bad. So when I'm mixing these colors, oil has this property where your eye actually goes through the oil and hits the back of the canvas and then comes back through. Well, we're using that to our advantage by creating sort of depth. So when I get this made into like a little circle, what I'm going to then do is I'm going to sort of make an overlaying disc of a much higher value, higher chroma, but more importantly for this, for this um, example, we're going to make it a, um, a more opaque paint. So then I'm going to go into my yellow here and into my orange. And I'm just making something that's similar to like a really high, if you were in a warm light skin chroma color. And I'm just going to put this on top. And so what I'm representing here is kind of like the same note as if it was in shadow and if it was in the light. I'm making them flat for this example and then over here I'll make a sphere so that you can see it applicable in, in real life because what we're doing usually if we're painting uh, skin tones is that it is this three-dimensional object that is shifting on you all the time. All right, so if you're wondering what colors I'm using right here, basically it's just cad orange and cad yellow at the moment for this one. I'm making more of a yellow version up here and then I'm going to make more of a red version and that's for, you know, if you're making rosy cheeks or lips or something to that effect. Okay, so now what I'm trying to do is, is express that the opacity and the thickness of the paint above and the thinness of the paint below is actually s separating the two to have a little bit more dimension. So just to add to it, I'm going to also go back here. I put a little bit of a gray tone on the background just so I wouldn't waste your time while I'm, I'm putting background in to add context. But what I'm also going to do is put a little bit deeper and lower value note of of this to kind of create shadow so it adds a little bit more dimension. Now value is playing a role here. Value meaning light to dark and um, chroma is playing a role here too but we'll be talking and discussing about those properties of the paint in one of our next episodes. So right now things that are in shadow are kind of I like the word that Jacob Collins used one time when I was studying under him. They're kind of like in this sort of mystical uh, realm because what they're doing is they're kind of getting like atmospheric light that's bouncing around them. And when that atmospheric light comes around, I'm going to just pull this over, uh, it, it, creates, it creates this sort of feeling that everything is in a different, I don't know, state or dimension. And then everything that's in the light has sort of this solidness to it. And so that's kind of what you're representing. When things are in the light, the light's bouncing right off of the, the material and reflecting in your eye. And it's creating it to have more of a solid effect. And so by creating the back or the shadow areas to be more thin and then the the opaque areas or the areas that are in the light more opaque and more chromatic it gives that solidity to it that you're, that you're wanting. So now we're going to make one that's red below this and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my transparent oxide red and these are the same colors I was using in the skin tone um, in the skin tone live stream, which you can go back to if you wish. I'm trying to basically make all of them applicable to, applicable <laughs> to each other so that um, it can help in different stages of your 
artistic journey. So if this was in shadow, this could be like it again, sort of your cheek. Um, this in shadow would be sort of like your forehead in shadow. And this is just a good way to sort of test color properties so that go together with each other. So this is a more of a lower chroma and um, and a little a, a lot darker in value color. And then I'm going to be putting my using my more opaque brush, switching back over. I'm going to go into my vermilion red that I have here. And I just mix some white with it to just gain a little bit more opacity to it. So I use lead white. Um, there's quite, I mean, there's so many other. Titanium white I use often too. Sometimes I'll mix titanium white and lead white together just because lead white sometimes is a little bit more expensive and it just allows for it to have a little bit more of a, uh, just lasts a little bit longer that way. Now, if I wanted to just bump up the chroma a little bit, because I have the value pretty high, I'm just going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson to it. Uh, I use that quite a bit in my, in my lips. Now, I'm not trying to make perfect circles today. That's not the, the object of this demonstration. So um, forgive me if, if nothing is perfect, especially with the sphere. I could spend hours on the sphere. I'm not um, going to because that could be for another day. Okay, so now I'm going to just go back in and do the same thing. Just going to add a little bit of like a cast shadow down here below just to kind of show the difference of the sort of the separation of the top disc and the lower disc. And notice that cast shadow is still very thin. I'm using um, French ultramarine mixed with transparent oxide red. Here we go. Let's just add a little bit of separation to it. And I'm just going to complete that the, the gray background color around the back. So a lot of artists, I mean, Rembrandt used this all the time. He would create really heavy, thick paint, textural paint in the front of whatever was in the light of his portraits. And then when everything was in shadow, on the back side, you just go and look next time you're at a museum where there's a Rembrandt and you'll notice that all of the shadows are very, very thin. Um, a lot of the features are very soft and very subtle and we'll talk more about those, those um, properties and ways to be able to use in the future. Okay, so now that we have sort of two examples, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to um, apply it to a sphere so that you can kind of see what that would look like. So I'm not going <laughs> to almost dip into my tarp. So I'm not going to dip into the tarp. I'm just going to grab a lot of thick paint here and just add a little bit more white. Now, like I said earlier, we're giving away a spot in Carlo Russo's in-person workshop. Um, and in order to enter, just like, share, and comment frame in the comment section. And um, you will be entered and we'll be giving away that at the next, at the uh, next Free Friday. And a little later, we're going to be giving away this week's Free Friday, which was the three video bundle. Okay, so now this is pretty high chromatic. So this would be somebody that would be re in really warm light or if you were trying to create a real high contrast in their skin tone. And then as I go down, I'm going to just add a little bit of sort of my neutral colors, a little bit of Viridian green. Still keeping it thick because even though I'm like going down 
in uh, down uh, around the sphere, all of this is still in the light and I want to separate this opacity of my paint that's in the light with the thin and transparent shadow. So I'm still going to try to keep this relatively thick and just go down a little bit in color. Back up. I'm going to try to create a little bit more value range here. But more importantly, just trying to lay down sort of a foundation. Try to get out of that black back and dark background color here. Okay, I'm going to keep adding a little bit more. And then add a little bit more of this to it. So I just keep a little bit more of that warmth in there. It goes down in chroma, but it's not like all the way to, to neutral. So I'm just going to drop it down a little bit more. Now, you create the range because this is sort of your universe and it can be um, it can be where this is like one really intense light or there's a whole lot of ambient light that's coming around it where it's like a huge light box and those that will change at the drop off rate on this and those are different light properties yet again not what we're really going for today and not really going for trying to create a perfect sphere today we're just trying to give you an example of thick and thin okay so now that I've created this side of everything that's sort of in the light, I'm going to go on, on my other brush and I'm going to go down to what I'm going to create my shadow color to be, which is just going to be a mixture between my transparent oxide red and yellow with a little bit of um, cobalt violet and French ultramarine. Now, now I will use just a touch of turp here because I, yet again I'm trying to create that thinness. So the idea would be is that if this is what they call a terminator line at which all the light ceases to hit that surface and then everything back here is ambient light that's hitting the sphere. So this value that comes up here to the terminator should basically merge with the value of what's in the light. So meaning that if I make this this dark then that's the darkness I should start going into the light with. So once I'm done kind of bringing this around and creating it to be you know, transparent and you can do this with layers and glazing Transparency of the oil paint is one of, one of my favorite properties of oil that seems to be different than a lot of other um, mediums. So what are media? So what you can also do is use it in glazing in the opacity. If you have thick and textural paint, you can then use it to like create you know wrinkles in an older person's face. Uh, it helps create texture. So now, I'm just going to go back up here. I'm just going to finish out this, sort of complete the sphere by getting really close to that value. Go ahead and bring it darker here. And I'm just going to keep adding more heavy, thick paint on the top here. I had mixed it a little bit into that background color and it's gotten into my mixture and has made it a little less pure. 
see if I can pull it back out again without having to dip in the terps. And so just like any gradient, I'm just going around pulling it down into that bottom right by the terminator. And I'm just going to go a little bit deeper in there. Still not dark enough to meet that terminator the way I want it to. Okay, and then I'm just going to, for the heck of it and for the fun of it, I'm just going to go in here and just create like a little cast shadow of this sphere. Yet again, not trying to be perfect with it. There are all sorts of, all sorts of um, different scientific understandings of how this cast shadow looks with umbra and pin umbra. Um, that is just for another day. Just trying to keep it simple and modulized, compartmentalized for you, for the viewer. And this is something I'd say practice. Just get a small little panel out. And if you don't like it afterwards, just wipe it out. You know, this just the one of the things that I found for myself is is that you know, just the fear of feeling like it has to be the perfect the first time you lay your brush down on the paint, on the, on the panel, kind of prevents you from wanting to experiment. And experimentation is one of, one of the ways for you to just continue to get better much faster. So, yet again, trying to keep that part of it as well um, thin, even though it's a darker value because it just helps with that understanding that I was talking about earlier. And then I'm just going to go in here and kind of complete this thing over here like this. And yet again, this is just one. We're probably going to make at least five in this series so that you can have a good, well-rounded understanding of the properties of the paint. It'll help you create more variety in your paintings, make them more interesting, because sometimes you'll be like, you know, my whole painting has just got lots of opaque color. I need to put some thin color. And that way you can just go in and create, um, if you wanted to, you could create a, um, um, a glazing techniques, and that will help like make your painting feel fresh again. If it's too opaque and if it's too thin, then that's easy. Just put some thicker, uh, pa opaque colors in there. So one more, the last thing I'm going to tell you about is, is by looking at this sort of range of my colors, your cadmiums are more opaque. And that would be my, like, my cad cadmium orange, my cadmium yellow. I'll mix that with white. White obviously has an opacity. Both, all of those also I use pretty heavily in, in a thick way. Then my alizarin crimson, my cobalt violet and my um, ultramarine, they're pretty transparent. And so a large part of my palette is transparent because I can always add white to help thicken the opacity of it. Um, my cobalt is, my cobalt blue is a little bit more um, opaque. Uh, my viridian is a little bit more opaque, but my sap green is uh, a little more transparent, and my, definitely my oxide yellow and red, and then my uh, raw umber is a slightly bit more opaque. This particular brand is a little bit uh, thinner, but it, it, um, I have found that traditionally in uh, most companies it's more of an op opaque color, and black is, is, uh, tends to be a little bit more transparent. So um, without any more to do, uh, we should draw the, the winner for uh, the three video bundle. Also, we have it available on our website. And everyone who commented, y'all are going to get a coupon to take $10 off of that uh, three video bundle. It's, it's a, a really great value. It's already a reduced price in order for uh, you to be able to buy three. You're getting to learn from some of the best still life painters in the country and three completely different approaches of how to paint a still life. Shows you the variety in, um, in, in how to be able to paint. So, all right, here we go. Slight drum roll. Let's see who it is. Steven Anderson. Steven Anderson, you've won yourself a three free video bundle. 
worth $297. We're really excited. We'll be in touch with you. Give us about 24 to 48 hours to uh, be able to send that out to you, and we'll make sure to, um, to um, reach out right away as soon as we have an opportunity. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. If this was helpful, please comment and let us know. If it wasn't, if there's things that you want to see on this show, we're trying to be able to add value to your lives and your painting journey. We really appreciate uh, you coming. We're also going to put this episode on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out some of the other products we have on our webpage. Thank you so much for joining us today.